Hey y'all, this is Sina. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I am back with craft fair idea number 22. And today I'm going to show you how I make bowl koozies. Now, if you watched my haul video that I made a little earlier today, um, I did say that I have made bowl koozies last year for my last craft fair. And y'all, let me tell you, okay, so about a week and a half or so before the craft fair, I decided let me just make one more thing and it ended up being the bowl koozies. I'd never made them before. So I said, how hard is it can be? So how hard can it be? So I'm like, okay, let's just do it. And I said, let's see if they would even sell. So I made 19 of them within two days, two evenings. And by then I was kind of tired of sewing the same thing. So I kind of stopped. But let me tell you y'all, they sold like hotcakes. They were one of my top selling items and people were asking for more. So this year, I'm not going to wait until a week or so before the fair. I'm going to make them a little bit at a time so that way I don't get burned out on sewing the same thing. But I will bring a big stack of bowl koozies this year as well. So let me just show you how I make this. Okay, so I usually buy my fabrics in half, half yard cuts. That way then, you know, I have a variety. And as you see here... I'm going to have a little bit left over from what I cut off. I'll use it for something else. But on this particular cut, I should be able to get two bowl koozies out of this. So, first thing I'm going to do is I've got it lined up. And I don't know if you could see. It's kind of hard to see on my camera. But I have it lined up on my on my line here. And I'm going to cut this at... at um, I'm going to cut this down to 10 inches going to be 10 inches squared so let me just let me just cut this okay so I've got my 10 inches let me take out the other one and then I'm going to cut this down 10 inches and I'm going to line this up and I know it's kind of hard for you to see I'm going to line this up and see Oh, yeah, I should have two good ones out of this. So I'm just going to cut off the salvage edge. So I'm just going to square it up so it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, line it up. And then I'm going to cut 10 inches here. So I've got 10 inch square, okay? In there, move it down here so I can see it. 26 down to 16. Okay, because I didn't start at one, I'm kind of starting in the middle of my mat. Okay, you want to make sure you have these good and straight. And since I've already got it there, I might as well cut this off, even though I'm only going to make one on camera. Okay. So this is what you got. Isn't that the cutest fabric, y'all? Donuts. So cute. I try to find any kind of fabric, but I try to include a lot of food fabrics. These are really fun if you do like your state's football team. Like I live in Texas, so um, the Cowboys are really popular. Or if you have like um, baseball team, Rangers are popular for us in Texas, you know. So you would just use whatever team you can that you can um, find in your craft store. I mean, we can't really find a lot of other teams, only like surrounding states from us, but whatever is your popular team close to you, those really sell a lot too, if you make them out of that too. Um, for like boys, you might even do cars or, you know, like any kind of, if you have cartoons or Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse was real popular. So anyway, okay, so I'm gonna quit where I'm blending on. So I'm only going to need two of these. So this was folded. So now I'm, this is two pieces, as you see. Got two pieces. Now what I'm going to need is I'm going to need one layer of one layer of my interfacing or my, my batting. So let me cut that. And then I'll show you what's next. So I'm getting my batting. Let me move this over here out of the way. 
And as you see, I just have some basic batting. This is fusible on one side. You don't have to use this kind, but you can. Okay, so we're gonna need two, two 10 inch squares for this. So let me get this cut at two 10 inch. I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna try to get this lined up the best I can. And, and okay, so I've got it lined up at 10 inches. And then I'm gonna quickly cut this at 10, okay? I usually go to Walmart and buy my interfacing because I can tell you Walmart is the cheapest and it's the same good Pellon interfacing. And Pellon is usually what I use. So I'm just gonna kind of square this up. And I'm gonna flip it around so I can square it up. Twenty. Okay. So there I go. So I got my two my two interfacing squares. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the interfacing and I'm going to iron it, iron the interfacing to each piece. That way then it's easier for when I sew it. So I'll be right back, I'm gonna go iron okay. these. Okay, so I have my pieces both ironed with the interfacing stuck to the back. And I went ahead and did one of my squares off camera, but I had to sew an X on each square. So I'm gonna do one of them on camera. So this is what I will do. So I'm just gonna line it up at the corner. I'm gonna start at the corner and I'm just gonna sew a straight stitch all the way down to get to the other end. Now, if you're making these, uh, a lot of these at one time, like mass reducing these, you can change stitch these. But since I'm only making one on camera today, then I'm not doing that, but you can chain stitch them. Okay, so now as you see, I've got one line sewed down the middle, cross to the other side, which is diagonal, and I'm gonna do the other one to the other corner. I just do a straight stitch. I don't do anything like fancy zigzags or anything. Just a straight stitch is all this needs. And this really holds all your interfacing in place. Okay. Now, I'm gonna clip off my strings. And so now I've got two of them that are like this, both with the X in the middle, if you can see that. Okay. So I've got my fabric sewed with the X and you can see that if you can see that, let's see if I can get that up there. If you can see it, it's got an X sewed in there. So your batting is sewed to the fabric. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your fabric towards each other. So it's gonna be like inside out and you're gonna have your interfacing on the outside or your batting on the outside. And you are going to mark one inch up from the bottom and two inches over from the side. And then you're gonna sew it a diagonal on each one of these corners. So let me sew these really fast. You can draw a line if that's helpful to you. I don't, I just kinda eyeball it. And, um, but you can feel free to do that. The line does not have to be perfectly straight. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew the other side. You can chain pieces if you want. Okay, so now as you see, I've got two corners sewed. Now I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the, the raw part, as you see, so it's gonna look like this, okay? I'm gonna cut off the other one. So it's gonna look like this, okay? Now you're gonna take it, open it up, 
going to fold it in half and you're going to just fold it in half and make it even at the top and you're going to do the same thing on this one. You're going to put a put a line one inch up or a dot one inch up and then two inches out uh, to the bottom. So I'm going to do on the side one inch by two inch. I'm going to do that on both of my both of my corners here. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, got that, and then I'm going to do two inches. Now I'm going to sew these. So let me just quickly sew this. Okay. Now I'm going to sew this corner to this. And then Gonna sew this one to this one, so you're sewing it at a diagonal again. And then I'm trim up my threads. And I'm gonna trim off this extra parts on the corner that I've sewed, on the other side of where I sewed. So now it's looking like this. So when you open it up, it's kind of got a bowl shape in the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have both of my pieces sewed, and I've sewed each corner at the diagonal. From the top, it's one inch from the bottom, and from the bottom seam, the folded seam, it's two inches in. So that's how I got these corners like this. So then when you do that on all four corners, it makes the shape of the bowl, okay? So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it inside out and I'm gonna make the pretty sides touch and I'm going to put these inside of each other. Hopefully you can see this. Now this part, I pin, okay? So I'm gonna use my, my pins here and I'm going to pin it all the way around because I like to make sure I hold this in place really well. I don't pin a lot of things when I sew, but these I mainly pin it mostly at the seams and the centers because you want it to be even when you're sewing it. Okay, so then you're going to, after you pin it all the way around, you're going to sew it all the way around but leave a small like two or three inch opening on one side so you can turn it inside out. So let me quickly do this. I'll show you how I sew this. And I, as you see, I kind of mainly try to get the pins and mostly where my seams are because you want you don't want them to move. You want it to be as straight as you can on those seams. And then try to get the corners. That's the most important thing is to make sure you get your corners Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way around, but leave an leave a opening about that much, about three inches, so I can turn it inside out. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to sew this. And I'm just going to start over here. You can see this. Just go along the edge. When I guide it along, use the side of the fabric and the side of your walking foot as the guide. That's what I use. I don't like worry about the seams. I, that's what I use. And I'm going to keep my, my feet down, my, my little feeder doohickey down. And this all the way around. When you get up to where you're going to be, pull out your, pull out your uh, needles. Just saw all the way around. These are really fast to make. You could probably make about four an hour if you're doing it continuous, if you've already done your cutting. So that's pretty good. So make sure you don't run over your needles. And try to keep it flat.
And I like to do my back stitching on here. So it's pretty important when it comes to this. You don't want your stitches to come out when you turn. Now, take your corners of each one and kind of snip off the corner. Don't interrupt the, the sewing where you put it though. On the outside, that way you don't have so much bulk, bulk on the corners. Okay, now I've got my opening. Where's my opening? There has been times I've sewed it closed. Okay, I got my opening over here and I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna pull it through. And then after I pull it through, I'm gonna go press it down and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have turned it inside out and I gave it a little press. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew a top stitch all the way around. That way I'm closing up this hole right here from where I turned it. And uh, this is what I'm gonna do. So let me just quickly sew this so I can show you what I'm doing. I usually start over here on the area where I had, I had left the hole. That way I get that closed up first. Okay, get this up, I need to move it over. Okay, there we go. Make sure you got your seam nice and flat. You don't want to like curl or anything. I'm going to sew it all the way around. I'm going through several layers so you have to, you know, just kind of nudge your machine sometime because, you know, we've got two layers of, of batting and two of the layers of the fabric. So, and then when you get those seams in there as well, it makes it a little bulky. I just, I just kind of give my, give it a little bit of pull. And if you have the up down feature on your machine for your, for your needle, I, I always like to use mine that way. Then when I stop to turn, it doesn't move. when you get to the end that you back stitch that way you hold your seam in there and that is it y'all when I'm done with these I usually give it a good good press but this is what it looks like brought a bowl here oh let me trim this off I hope no it's just an extra so once you press it I always pressed mine right after I finished sewing them again but um but anyway, this is what it looks like. You're able to put your bowl in here. And let me tell you, y'all, okay. The first ones that I made, I came out and I had made two Christmas ones. And I told my husband, I said, here, try this out. And I made us some ramen noodles, probably. And of course, your bowl is going to be hot from it just cooking. So I gave it to him and he goes, this is pretty cool. Now, we use them all the time. And... Whenever they get dirty, I throw them in the wash and then I just let them air dry because that way I can keep the shape and voila, they are still perfect. But y'all, there's the bottom. You can see it. It's got the bowl shape and there you go. This, my friends, is my bowl koozies that I make. So um, yeah, here you go. I hope you like this and I hope you'll give it a try. If you're not, if you don't sew, but you have a machine. I promise you, you can do this. This is a very beginner, easy, easy uh, task or project to do. And um, I promise you that um, you'll have them whipped up in no time. And you'll be start making them for your craft fair. Or you might make them for family or friends or just to keep at your house. So um, anyway, remember, get some good fun, good, some good fun prints also. Because this one's a real fun print. So anyway, okay, so pricing, really quick. Pricing for the bowl koozies. I'm going to be selling these for, um, I'm going to sell them for $6 a piece. And uh, I think the $6 is fair. 
It doesn't take a lot of fabric and really without me having to go iron in the other room and all that, really I can make one after I've cut everything in 15 minutes. And so once you get used to having to make it and which way you need to cut and all that, you can whip these out fast too. So I think $6 is a good price for these and uh, they're fun and uh, yeah, give it a try. Okay, y'all, so I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments below if you like, and until my next video, we'll see you later. Bye, y'all.